If you were to go to a dictionary and look up strangely disappointing, you wouldn't find anything because that's two words, learn to use the dictionary properly. But if you Googled that phrase, I'm pretty positive you'd find Wolfson listed as a major definition. Because boy, this one felt like it was going somewhere better than it did end up going, doggone. It just kept going into weirder and weirder ass territory. And it lost me, but not before I made a whole lot of notes and funny little swear words about the experience. So as always, I am here with a review of Wolfson, Lords of Mayhem. And despite my little teaser making the game sound like it'll be parallel with the words ass and bad, could it, through a bunch of oddities and interesting concepts, be potentially the best ARPG ever made? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's talk. So I thought for the longest time that this was a Warhammer spinoff. I mean, it's got the same kind of, uh, I don't know, feeling. Bunch of dickheads in power armor, Republic's weird world full of this and that. These shoulders. Like, god damn, look at that. What the f Fuck, man, how do you even walk? And then, no, I found out that this game is an original creation, which is somewhat perplexing because everyone talks like the world and the denizens should be well known and established. And by talk, I mean constantly. This is one of the most story heavy ARPGs I've seen. And at first, I thought this would end up being something cool. The voice acting was interesting to have, cutscenes seemed good, but by the time you get to your 80th Vin Diesel fucking family speech, I'm sure you'll begin loathing the sight of everyone. Especially bald fuck here, because the instant I open the game, you are treated to exposition about how he mentors you and your siblings and has plans to do something any kind and I instantly knew he was a boss fight like let alone three times okay but at the character select I decided since it was possible to be noob cybot but then I thought wait this hair system is heinous so then I became the fucking Grinch complete with a Whoville ass cut and the game begins with an extended tutorial where you get to see that the antagonists are once again spiritual demon-esque beings and I just want one ARPG to be set in like New York City anyhow immediately the game feels good like it has some mega impact on attacks and that's what hooked me initially combat was extremely satisfying mostly because of good visual design and movement ability in the form of this role you have. Using a stamina charge per roll, you can just somersault around, both being good for combat and out of combat mobility. But speaking of this role for a second, I hope you like spamming the ever loving shit out of it because it's just too fast to pass up. I'm not even saying this sucks. I mean, it's a little stupid, but it's pretty fun that the game lets you move around this fast. Moving back to character creation for a second, I should mention that there are no classes. This allows you to build however you want with skills being called Enerax, annoying name, then I didn't even like reading that. But as you slay gangs of beasts, they can drop a variety of these items which upon use unlock them as skills. These skills can be freely swapped in and out but they all require you to fulfill some kind of requirement, usually just having a specific piece of gear equipped. This means you'll probably still end up following one of the classic RPG archetypes. As you use skills they develop by leveling up, it's fucking Final Fantasy 2 damn, but it's done well because each Enerac has an entertaining prospect of being able to assign perks outlined in this here tree. Now the skills looked really fun at first, I was down for the system, I thought leveling up to gain new perks and having increasingly powerful moves from usage was novel and should have been exciting. It's a shame that it's not. The problem is that you have about a billion choices, but they can be shoved into distinct categories of movement, single target, AOE, and a buff here and there. And the skill board is the most bland, disinteresting thing imaginable. There's so many that just say the same thing. Deal 20% more damage with this skill. No, actually deal 25% more. Big hit, small hit, small dick, big dick. It's just such a whatever thing. And besides, I have no fucking idea how it works. You get interact experience for seemingly using the skill, but it's just kind of a passive process of seeing the little indication of leveling up blink at the top of your screen. And also, I have very little ability to comprehend and internalize what each level is really doing. The UI is messy, there's just a lot of submenus and information you don't want. Really, it just became like, oh boy, I got another point somewhere, what the, what the fuck? This has all been about skills themselves, but don't worry, we have a sphere grid ass table as well. And it's fine, it's probably the most enjoyable part of leveling because it's just more interesting. This is a good time to mention that the game kind of does have class archetypes that you still have to follow as warrior, rogue, and spellcaster defined by red, green, and blue. Okay, wait a minute. Who the fuck made this rule? Because thinking about it, every game in the RPG genre has warriors as red, the angry color, green as the ranger and rogue, wind maybe, why is wind always depicted as green too? Like, And then blue is the spellcaster thing, like, well, Mana is blue, but that's a fictitious liquid that produces magical power, so I actually have little idea why mages are always blue. I'm always taking a big shit all over things, so uh, I think my color indicator would be brown. I suppose we should keep talking about the actual game. So yeah, the tree, it's got a bunch of each section, meaning that you have some overlap. You may want to be a warrior, but you're gonna have to deal with the less meaty sections from the other two archetypes. Which, by the way, I like to test games for their AP, that of course being ape potential, and as a result of the attribute system, I promise this is the last of the systems we have, but it's your standard level up equals more points to invest. But we're on Wall Street or some shit because they give you 10 points every level up, that way you can spend even more of them exclusively on ferocity. Yeah, so I just uh, lob points exclusively at bigger damage, more damage, hit them so hard they explode, big bonk, attack only, and you know what, just let me show you a montage of how the game went.
So that worked for a long time until very late into the campaign, but before that we should talk about how during the story all these characters are never STFUing, which stands for seriously, there's fucking unbelievably incessant non-stop gabbing about every single thing that happens and it makes you just wait through cutscenes. And you just want to get back to bonk things, let me get back to bonking things please thick woman, I wish to attack things. But before more elaboration on that, I think I should actually offer my pretty uninformed information about Wolfson's history. The game releases in 2020, I wasn't there, I didn't even notice, but a lot of people did and it was apparently a pretty hyped endeavor. But can you say bug? I, mean, I hope you can, that's a three letter word. And in this case, it was a huge dong in the game's face because everything was presented with glitches and errors. And to be honest, now you can even feel some of them. Some tool tips are broken, some ragdolls just sink through the floor. I mean, I can't imagine how bad this really was since people constantly mention it. But now with all the surrounding information given to you, I think it's time to talk about the gameplay itself. Here's my award-winning review. It's good. And for a time, it was really fun, but encounters start getting on your nerves, mostly because the maps are large and linear and enemies like to just spawn in clumps and then disappear for a while. So a lot of the rotation is first uh, roll in and then gear up a big hit and then you're back to rolling. The, the game has a lot of this. Now, I'm sure there's more to some archetypes of play. I mean, there's a lot of movement abilities that are enjoyable, but the loop of combat just doesn't have a great deal of uniqueness. It's, it's average. Animations and feeling are great though. The slam you can achieve here is like a Denny's breakfast. I mean, it's, it's real grand. Which brings me to two things that are positive and you might say, shit, you're actually enjoying something. And yes, this game has uh, the break bar. Now, what does the break bar do? Well, the break bar is a coexisting bar next to HP, which degrades as you hit enemies. And I think it scales based on what move you're using. At least I like to think my big bonk attack is doing more than a little dinky dagger dick. But when you fully degrade the break bar, you get a stun on your target. So it's really enjoyable to roll in, slam the fucking shit out of a boss, and then you know keep laying in after that. It's engaging to lean out for an almighty attack. And that's the kind of thing that excites me in ARPG combat. Also on the topic of bosses, one of the most interesting ideas Wilson had for combat is called hunts. Essentially, it's probably just your average Path of Exile League mechanic, but it's novel, so I figured why not mention it? It begins with you finding some kind of carcass, which prompts you to choose between options which affect the boss you're soon to fight. If you go up and interact with all the traces, you'll fight this boss you've amalgamated together, and based on your choices, it will either be more difficult and more profitable, or easier and less profitable. Although I never actually got a good item from a hunt, so you should probably ignore me praising this. Oh yeah, the last interesting thing I want to mention, after this the game is just nose diving into my ass, but when you lose all your life in combat, you actually get to have three more chances with this second win system. After that, yeah, you're dead. But it's cool that you can muster up more energy past your health bar. It gives a little more of an interesting interaction with bosses. It allows a new player to discover surprising one shots, making the bosses have a legitimate challenge, but then you still get to try again without redoing anything. It's a nice addition. I guess we should start talking about enemies and in terms of what you're killing, the game fails in my honest, genuine, undeniable, outrageously correct opinion because it's mostly man. Even the fungi-esque demons are comprised of many men. The reason for this gathering of guys is that you're seen as an evildoer by the totally not evil group of the Imperials or the Empire or whatever name they use. Okay, let's just simplify this. You're an Ascended. I literally wish I just wasn't. And as a result, you have magic oozing from your orifices and like, I don't know, you can roll so many times in a row. And your adoptive father, now he's a real high-ranking guy and he's, you know, also a huge piece of shit because basically he's saying he's putting his bets on this demonic presence because things around here are so bad. He's actually listening to a guy that looks like this. There's really no redemption. He actually just has Stonehead Syndrome. As a result of not being as dumb as dumb huge shoulder pauldrons, man, you're branded as a total asshead and everyone in the land wants you dead. Except for this Chad group of light beings and after a few hours you start thinking that there's too many factions of people. You also have a demon inside you that has implications for gameplay and I think it sucks. Basically, whenever you fill the demonometer, you can become a choosable avatar of war, but they feel clunky and slow and the last thing I really want is to become someone else in this ARPG where I build my character to do what I want. It's like you're playing a card game and halfway through someone gives you a better deck that makes it easier to win, but you only get it for like 30 seconds. You tell the guy to go suck eggs, ass, and dick and you want to play your own game. Also, your character is blissfully unaware about this uh, strange demon in his brain problem until later events of the game and you gotta wonder how dense your character is. Literally, you'd have to be an almighty ape brain to not notice something like that. I mean, like, what a total dip ass. And to be honest here, I started skipping cutscenes because they're both incredibly frequent and unbelievably repetitive. You have to give huge props to the voice actors in the game, you know, since there's just so much dialogue being said, and honestly, I think everything sounds pretty good. I just can't say the same exact thing about the floppy model cutscenes, all 90 of them. It's just so over the top. So this is an explanation of why there's about a million generic soldiers to kill, and it's also a nifty way of complaining more about the story. And if you think I'm being too unfair about men being the only target for smacking with hammer, there's also spiders and undead. Look at that, fucking insane. I know I'm not exactly being fair, but the good news is that I don't want to be, as Sigma Grind said TBH. But speaking of grind, reading gear. 
yes, it's stink. Normally an ARPG is fun because of items being a bit nutty. You know, take Diablo 2. You get a huge ticket item and it's memorable. It's wild. You love everything about it. It's a total prized possession. Here, I can't even determine what item has the best rarity. There's purple uniques and then red legendaries, and I think purples are better, but they feel pretty much the same in terms of power. And then there's this star system. Like, I don't know, what is the difference between one star and five star? What do you mean, look shit up? Fuck you. But that's not the problem. The problem is that Gearing Wilson is just such a bore. I don't even care about 80% of the stats on these pieces. It all blends together. Very occasionally did I find something with a fun little modifier, but for the most part, there's a bunch of stats which are hard to determine how good they actually are. Like plus 48% ailment damage, plus 22% curse duration on enemy, allows the bearer to use consuming embers, plus 34 material ailment chance score, plus five second rage conservation time. I mean, I prefer more damage, bigger crits, huge fucking balls, or just tool tips to explain what each of these things do. Instead, you'll sit there wondering if rend damage has anything to do with bleeding, or if this and that count as ailments, or what this does, or if grayed out text is something you actually get on an item or not. If it, it ain't the bestie, it's a bit messy. That's what we, that's what we hear. That's what we say here on Seer. We have never said that. In addition, there's a socketing system, and frankly, a better name would have been the cocketing system. Firstly, you have a trillion types of gems of varying qualities, and then you have an ass load, and I mean loads of ass of types for the sockets themselves. So if you have a defense two socket type or a type two diabetes socket, well, go to your gem and find what that particular gem does in that particular socket. If it's nothing you want, well, sucks to be you. You can try re-rolling the socket type, but it begins to feel like it's sure. And half of the gems don't even give you anything that exciting. It's more of the mods you can find on gear. And crafting, I mean, I it's pretty much just tacked on. I didn't even notice it was here, to be honest. It was like me at every party I've ever been to. There's some use for it, of course, but it's a very mediocre interface. You can pull off modifiers, put new ones on, randomization, re-rolling, all that. So if you like to min-max, you may, but if you like to max min, I don't really think it hurts you. What is seemingly a cool way to get gear instead of the traditional methods is actually through vendors. They happen to sell a lot of good stuff, even higher rarities than you'd expect. So if you're looking to get stronger, you might just wander over to these guys and hit them up for a few pieces of gear. End game. Okay, here we go. So during the fourth act, you get access to a war table and another system of like jobs you undertake. They cost money and time, the time being represented by using the war table. These send you on basically missions. They're short dungeons or little boss fights and then once you complete them, you get rewards. Now the final boss is constantly approaching which is influenced by you undertaking jobs. Now to this point, I literally only took strength attributes. Literally 100% of the points went into ferocity. That was fantastic until this point and then it totally stopped working. You have to get a lot stronger from the end of act three to the end of act four. And the final boss actually is fairly difficult since you only get one chance at it. If you die, you have to restart act four, which is insane. You get to keep all the progress you had made up to the point where you got dumpstered. So just go through the motions of setting up jobs to improve yourself and nerf the final encounter and you'll be able to overcome it. Now, the same rhythm continues into the end game and I didn't see the appeal. You're actually fairly starved for money in Wolfson at first, so I couldn't even utilize a lot of these systems. It opens up completely here and you can invest in tons of things to do a variety of effects, but I couldn't even determine if any of these missions or jobs or whatever led to a new boss encounter. The final boss keeps showing up with the same mechanics. So, I mean, that's something, but it becomes a tedious farm where I'm not even sure there's a point. I was sad that my enthusiasm ended so abruptly, but there was just nothing left to really experience. I had my fill of rolling in at this point. So let's recap. You have a very story-driven plot, which is annoying, which leads into combat experiences, which are fun for a bit, yet unrememberable in the long run, and then an endgame that is possibly completely pointless and at the very least very tedious. I don't know. I think Wolson isn't the best ARPG ever made. It had outrageously good potential, and it was actually fun to play. I want people to know that. If you're looking for a campaign where you just play around with crazy setups and do a lot of damage, then you should give the game a try. If you're looking for possibly the best ARPG ever, eh, well, I think the end game dropped the ball too hard for that to be the case, and the itemization and the setting and the bugs, it's just, you know, a lot about the experience wasn't perfect. The question is, what do I actually like in an ARPG? It feels like that keeps shifting around. Like, sometimes I enjoy story-based games, other times I enjoy base games with chicken killing for no reason. There might be just too many concepts for one man to critically review, like this genre has an avalanche of systems and concepts and inconsistencies. The good news is that I'm strong of mind and heart, and I think as a result, we're going to be able to finally review some of the games we've been teasing so much. Maybe like Diablo 2, or maybe Minecraft Dungeons. Oh, next, it's your all. Yes, you're here to know how to serve a drone. Let's play out.